Hello children and welcome to my channel, The Cookie Club. Today we're going to be making oat cookies. Yum! My signature um, bake that I've been making for about 20 years now. So we'll get straight into it. At the end I will um, upload an image of the ingredients so don't worry if you don't make a note along the way of what ingredients you need and the quantities. I will do that at the end for you. So uh, my beautiful assistant, if I can have my first ingredient, which is butter or margarine. If you're going to be using butter, make sure it's softened first. Uh, margarine is already soft, so I prefer to use margarine for cookies. Um, if I was making biscuits, I would use butter, but for cookies, I use margarine. So you want to soften the, the margarine or butter a little in the bottom of your bowl. As I said, it's margarine, so it's already quite soft. It won't need very much. Then my next ingredient is sugar. Now, cookies traditionally have brown sugar in them, and so do these. I have mixed equal quantities of white caster sugar with some brown sugar. You don't have to do this. If you don't have um, any brown or any white, you could just have all the same. But I like to do equal quantities of both. And that is 170 grams in total. OK, and you want to give these a good stir. Now, the technical term for what I'm doing now is creaming. You want to cream the butters and sugars together. This will take, depending on how strong you are and how often you do it, about a minute to do. If you want to get it super creamy, you want to spend a bit longer, maybe another minute. You could, of course, put this in a food mixer and it would do it much quicker and easier. But if you're a kid and you're not allowed to use a food mixer, you can very easily do it by hand. So once you've creamed your sugar and your butter together, you need to add your next ingredient, which is an egg. Thank you. Now. When you're adding an egg, what you want to do is add it to a separate bowl if you can, so that if any shell goes in it, you can easily take it out. If you put it straight into your mixing bowl, that can be quite tricky. So we're going to break our egg, crack it first, and then we're going to put our thumbs inside the hole and pull it apart gently. You will get a little bit of egg on your fingers, but don't worry, it won't hurt you. Right, so that's your egg. There's no shell in there, so that's great. So we'll just add that directly to our mix. You could whisk it up a bit first if you wanted to, makes it slightly easier to incorporate, but you don't need to. Right, now we're going to mix, 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 mix. Now, initially when you start mixing egg into batter, it starts to look like this, which is curdled which looks a bit like sick, but don't worry, it won't taste like it. You keep mixing until it becomes emulsified into a lovely creamy batter. And you saw how long that took me, less than half a minute. You have to put a bit of arm strength into it. Professional cooks always have strong arms. There we go. Doesn't that look pretty? Now then, we need to add our flavouring. You don't have to add a flavouring, but if you do, vanilla extract is a good option. Any old vanilla extract, doesn't matter where you get it from. You could, of course, add a different flavour. Sometimes I like to add almond extract or coconut extract, but today we're doing vanilla. If you haven't got any, don't worry. They will still taste super delicious without. There we go. Make sure you've got somewhere clean to put your spoon, otherwise it'll make a sticky mess all over your counter. Give that a good mix. Make sure your flavor is really incorporated before you add your next ingredient. Now, the vanilla extract I just added was a teaspoon of vanilla extract, just one teaspoon. Okay, next ingredient is flour. This is plain white flour. Okay, full of gluten, <laughs> full of 
full of wheat, just plain white flour. If you are gluten intolerant, you can of use, course use plain white gluten free flour. Right, just tip that in. And then give it a nice fold. Folding is the technical term when you add the flour to your batter. Now, when you're making cakes, this is a very important stage. You don't want to knock the air out of the flour, of the ingredients you've already put in. So you do it very carefully. With cookies and biscuits, it doesn't really matter because you're not interested in having them rise. So it doesn't matter as much. So you can just give them a nice good stir. Now then, because this is oat cookies, we're going to be adding oats. At some point, I will upload a cookie recipe that doesn't contain oats if you're not a fan or you can't get hold of them. Basically, it's the same sort of recipe, but you add more flour to it. Okay, so we've got our oats. We have got 10 ounces or 280 grams of oats. I will put up um, how, many oat, uh, how many grams and ounces at the end. So two nice bowls of oats and let's give it a stir. Now, whilst we're stirring these in very carefully because we don't want to overflow onto our counter we will think about whether or not we want to add any other flavorings now then if I were to ask my son what cookies he wanted well there'd be no point because he always says chocolate chips. chip but sometimes I like to put raisins in other times I like to put other dried fruit in which you can chop up like cherries for instance and other times I like to put nuts in. Walnuts are particularly good, but you can use any nuts. Cut them up a little bit first and add them in. Whatever, whatever you fancy putting in is fine. But today we're going to be adding some chocolate chips. Right, okay. Now, my son helped me measure out these ingredients and I seem to have an inordinate amount of chocolate chips here. I will not be adding all of them, just a few. Now you can add as many as you like, of course, and you could make them different colored chocolate. This is just plain milk chocolate, but you could add dark chocolate chips or white chocolate. If you haven't got chocolate chips, you could take a chocolate bar and chop it up into chunks, any size chunks you like. Right, so we're going to be adding a couple of handfuls of these, not the whole bowl. So one, two, and I think just a little bit more. There we go. So it's not an exact amount, but I tell you what, it's about 70 grams I've just added, if you want to know. And we give that a nice stir to combine. And voila, that's it, we're finished. That took me, although I've already pre-measured my ingredients, eight minutes to do. So it's really very quick. And the next thing you want to do is to create them into balls and put them onto a baking sheet. So my beautiful assistant is preparing my baking sheet for me. Here we go. There we are. Very good. Thank you very much. So we're going to be adding balls of our dough to our baking sheet. Here we go. So there's one ball. That's the sort of size that we normally have in our household. You can tell from the size in my hand, but it's really up to you how big they are. So I put it down and then just flatten it a little bit. We quite like them quite crunchy in our house. And in order to get them quite crunchy, you need to make them quite jagged at the top. So rather than having them round and smooth, you can have them a bit jagged. Now, this bowl for this size cookie is going to create about 15. If you want to make a slightly bigger cookie, obviously that will be less. If you're going to make a smaller cookie, then you'll have more. 
just make sure you've got enough baking sheets for them otherwise you'll have to put them in in a couple of batches and wait longer for them now once I'm done I'm going to put them in the oven for this is the easy bit if it's a fan oven 170 degrees and the easy bit is for 17 minutes so 170 and 17 that makes it nice and easy to remember if it's a convection oven you'll need it slightly hotter so you'll need it to be about between 180 and 190 degrees again for 17 minutes okay that's it for now so these i'm going to put in the oven and then i'll upload a picture of how they look i hope you've enjoyed making these with me and uh, will join me next time for my next bake thank you very much <laughs>